everybody. Thanks for watching this video. I just am doing a little channel update. We're coming into a new season. Uh, school started this past week, which was very fun. It went it went very well. Things go so much better when we're on schedule. I just have less time to record now and uh, less time to edit. So I realized like my stream of content is going to be slowing down and I thought I would just put a little video out there. You know what I'm planning for this next year so you know that I'm still working. I'm still, um, you know, this is still my creative outlet. I just have less free time now that uh, we're in, we're getting into homeschooling again. If you haven't been, um, you know, watching my channel over the summer, a big thing is I started doing a show called Across the Board, which focuses on environmental sustainability in board gaming. I know, it was kind of a crazy thing that happened. I kind of jumped in the deep end and started talking about environmental concerns in our board gaming hobby on social media got crazy amounts of feedback and a lot of it was very dismissive and uninformed uh, perspectives that um, I just took to heart and realized like there is a hole here in our board gaming community and this has really given me a whole new spark of inspiration for making videos and content for my channel. Um, I've been interviewing people for the first time. I've never done interviews before so it's a very big learning experience. I have been doing journalism-ish type stuff where I'm investigating uh, stories and researching stuff. Oh, I did one video like that but feels like a big deal because it's a very new um, format for me. So it's exciting but it's a totally different type of work. So I am going to continue in this work of talking about eco-friendly gaming, gaming and sustainability in board games because uh, someone should. And I guess I'm not someone until other people feel like they want to talk about it too. A couple videos that I have coming out, I, I recently talked with T from Haba USA and they were ta telling me all about box sizes. And I know that sounds kind of boring, but this is actually something that comes up a lot, um, whether a box is too big or too small or not the right uh, proportion for game. And so a lot of thought goes into that and there's a lot of um, behind the scenes that go into those decisions. And so that's a very interesting uh, episode that I am editing right now and have in the works. Um, I also have some designers that I'm planning to talk to that uh, they their games are environmentally themed and they um, are also producing them with more sustainable practices. So I'm very excited to talk to some of those designers in the next couple weeks. And this coming week, I am going to be talking with Derek Pennington. So he's been a friend of the channel uh, over this past summer, really giving me a lot of insight into sustainability. He is a sustainability consultant. So I'm having him come on to talk about sustainability, just starting from the very basics and then how it can pertain to our board gaming hobby. If you have any questions for the board game designers or if you have questions for Derek about sustainability, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Just a little note about using the PDF for rating games for eco-friendliness. I included my Earth Friendly Stars on the PDF, which was my mistake. I wouldn't want someone to actually use that logo as it might visually mislead someone to think that I'm actually rating that game. Please use the information listed the 10 points, but not the Earth Star logo. Thanks. I'm still a diehard Spirit Island fan. That's the one game we've been playing consistently throughout the whole summer. And I've really been growing as a gamer. I've been playing solo. I've been playing um, some of the spirits that I kind of was nervous about playing, but you know, it wasn't a big deal. I tried them out, especially being able to play solo by myself. Um, I felt much more, you know, 
able to just take my time and really learn the spirits. So I've been playing Thunder Speaker and I've also been playing Volcano Looming High with my husband. So I am excited to talk about these spirits and these new uh, aspects to the game that I'm learning. Uh, and also my husband and I think we will be, I think we're going to be ra ranking the spirits together. My husband's played all of them. I've played lots of them lots of different times and I think that would be really fun content to have coming up sometime in this uh, this fall season. The reviews that I have coming, I'm gonna be reviewing Sleeping Gods, which is a cooperative story-driven game that I, I can't wait to talk about it. I'm, I'm just gonna say it. So I, we want to play it completely through and then I kinda wanna see what it's like on the second play before I talk about it. I'm really interested in how it feels longevity wise. Um, but anyway, I'm very excited about uh, making some content for Sleeping Gods. And I'm also doing a collaborative video with Jordan Plays Blue where we swapped some of our favorite games. So he recommended I play Space Base and I recommended he play Manila and we're gonna review them together and get each other's feedback. So that's something to be on the lookout in the next couple of months as well. Uh, so over the summer I've been playing a couple different games I've been meeting with our, our game group for some different things. Uh, we've been, a lot of cooperative games. I played uh, The Captain is Dead, and Alien, The Fate of the Nostromo. The Nostromo. Um, both collaborative games based in outer space. I, I, I actually, liked the captain is dead a bit more the alien is uh it's very thin like uh visually thematic to the the movie alien but the uh the gameplay was not it, it's so hard and um no one dies which i thought was a little disappointing shouldn't uh, everyone died. Another game that I've been enjoying this summer is Genotype. That This was a game that was given to me as a review copy from Genius Games. I did a review of it and it's on my channel right now. It's a really lovely worker placement and I've just found um, I've been playing it more and more. It's kind of like a really nice go-to worker placement that is beautiful. Definitely check that video out if you haven't yet. Um, we've been playing a lot of oldies. A lot of we've been playing Concordia, Viticulture, Firefly. Um, with the kids, I've been playing Yinch, which is an abstract strategy game, kind of in the same line or akin to Checkers, but different. Uh, very simple rules, but very deep strategy. So you can really play at the, whatever level they're at. And my four-year-old uh, is very good at it. <laughs> yes, but oh, we've also been playing Project L as uh, it's actually in retails now. Project L is a favorite of mine. It is a polyomino puzzle engine building game. It recently came out in retail, so now it's available a lot more before it was uh, just Kickstarters. Uh, so it's a game I've been recommending for a while and finally it's available. So it's a great go-to for new gamers. It is not eco-friendly though. <laughs> There's a lot of plastic in it. Not that it's not eco-friendly, it just wouldn't get very high eco-friendly stars unfortunately. But it is a wonderful game that will, you know, gets a lot of use at least at, at our game nights uh, and the only thing I want to say is when we were playing it it seems a little light on the game pieces I don't know if anyone else um, has noticed that but when we were playing we actually ran out of the green pieces and uh, some other people said when they played solo they ran out of the yellow pieces so I don't know if that was a way to keep it affordable Project L is very affordable the retail is only about $30 which is great value for the the game that it is. I just wonder if maybe they want a little too light on the game pieces. Um, there is ways to get past that. I'm really curious what the game designers, if they're, if they're speaking to that, but I believe what you can do is just, um, you, you have to do the upgrade action more. I don't know, it's kind of a weird issue, but Maybe if anyone's heard what's going on with Project Down the Game Pieces, let me know in the comments. Uh, it's I still think it's a great game. I have two games that I'm really looking forward to playing in the future. Um, I really want to play Meadow. That is um, just a nature-themed game where you're building tableau cards. I, I don't 
really new. I just like the way it looks and I hope to play it one of these days soon. And another game that's on my to playlist is Calico. So hopefully I'll have a chance to play that as well. If you have a recommendation for me, let me know. Maybe I'll have a chance to play it. Um, I'll continue to make videos probably just once a week or so if um if i'm lucky it might even be a little bit less than that but i'm still playing games i'm still loving the board gaming hobby and still very passionate for the environment all right well i hope you guys have an awesome week and i will see you in the next video